BBC Six Music. First question is, when were you first aware of music, even maybe as a young child? It would have been um, the Beatles, um, Michel, my ba 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 that song, uh, when I was living in Germany, uh, and I was staying with a German friend, and she was making cabbage soup out of her garden for me, and that song came on the radio, and I remember standing alone in the living room looking at the radio on a tall shelf and thinking that it was really beautiful. I think they were singing in German or French. I don't think it was the English version of that song. But that would be my first kind of memory of music. Did you have quite a musical upbringing? Was it quite a musical environment you were brought up in? Not particularly. My parents were very specific about what they loved, um, and, uh, uh, and, and they would play it over and over and over again. Uh, although my, I come from an artistic family, uh, music was not a huge part of, of, of my upbringing. I suppose the big question is, what was your first single? What was the first record that, you, that was yours that you owned? My grandmother took my two sisters and I to a record store, Mr. Pemberton's record store. I don't know why I remember his name, but I do. And he had some um, singles that were um, discounted. And so we were able to buy whatever we wanted. I think she gave us $5 between us. And we bought um, uh, an Elvis Presley album uh, to one of his films called Double Trouble, which I could sing for you right now, but I choose not to. And a Disney film called The Parent Trap, starring Haley Mills as identical twins. Yeah. And they get into lots of trouble, and they sing a lot. I don't, God knows why. And then these singles, and among th- this was in Texas, and we're talking like thousands of years ago. So amongst the singles was Tammy Wynette's D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Good tune. Great song. And um, uh, I Want to Hold Your Hand by the Beatles. Now, if that isn't random... Oh, it's, yeah, that is pretty eclectic. It was before punk rock radically changed my life at the age of 15. Um, there were songs on the radio that resonated with me, and I don't know, I'm, to this day, I don't know why, and they're really weird songs, but Benny and the Jets by Elton John was a huge hit single in the U.S. and just seemed like it came from another galaxy. And it's one of the weirdest produced, I mean, as an adult now and someone who records music, the production on that song is one of the weirdest ever uh, to make probably the top 20. And then um, uh, Rock On by David Essex, which my band went on to pay homage to in in the song Drive. When you started rehearsing with with Peter, Mike and Bill, were there any kind of songs you used to cover very early on in your career? What were your kind of early band Kind of, kind of touchstones, I suppose. There were songs that we would play simply because we didn't have, we had not written enough songs ourselves to fill out a set, and people always wanted more, more, more. So we would do um, uh, "Roadrunner" by Jonathan Richmond. But we were, we were a fun party band, uh, and and then somewhere along the way, we actually learned how to write songs. What can you remember from that first single from Radio Free Europe? Can you remember, what can you remember from recording it? Were you unbelievably excited to? get in the studio and record that track no i was uh <laughs> i mean i wasn't i didn't know the process of recording and in fact it wasn't until the second album uh, of ours called reckoning that i realized the difference between the bass guitar and the guitar i didn't know which one did what sound seriously now i knew that the bass guitar had four strings on it because uh, i could count them but i didn't know that the bass guitar was the one that did the low notes and the guitar was the one that did the high notes i mean that's how ignorant i was of music uh and so you know we we take these things and we do the best that we can with them. Uh, you worked I, it out now. I did okay, yeah. What do you think would be the track that kind of first put you into the mainstream of yours? The first R.E.M. song. Where you felt you'd connected. Uh, well, I mean, I, on some level, I mean, it's the, 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 the insane insecurity and the kind of um, uh, courage to, to, to perform in the first place. You know, from from the first show that we ever did, I, I kind of felt like a huge pop star, so just because people were clapped after we would do something, and, and that's a great feeling. But I think the one I love is a song that came out in 1986 or 87, and that that went to the top 20 in, in the U.S. And that's that's when it felt like, wow, this is really, actually serious. This is real. Because it always fascinates me when a, when someone works. It doesn't doesn't have to just be music. When someone works for a long time and wants something, and then they get what they want. Well, we didn't know what we wanted. I mean, that was, the thing was, we were like the band that had no goals. So the fact that we were making records and touring just felt like this amazing adventure to us. And w- w- we, we didn't necessarily want to conquer the world. But we, managed, we, like, we wound up doing exactly that in, 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 in some small corner of the universe that belonged to pop music and, and us. In terms of R.E.M., you're often credited as being one of the bands that kind of took alternative music into the mainstream. Did you kind of... Look at bands like maybe Nirvana or Pearl Jam, who I mentioned because 
Eddie Vedder's on the record um, and kind of recognize some of yourself in those guys? Never. <laughs> and I, 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 I never get it when people say they took so much from you and not they being uh, Pearl Jam or Eddie or, or Kurt or Nirvana, but I just don't see it. I, when people compared us to the birds early on, I didn't. I had no idea what they were talking about. And of course, it was the way that Peter picked uh, the string of the guitar rather than strumming it. But I didn't know enough about music or music history or the sound of the birds to make that distinction. I I only recently found out that my voice is somewhat unique, is incredibly unique, and that people recognize uh, my singing voice instantly. Uh, and I didn't know that for 25 years uh, of making records. And that's not false modesty or humility. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I honestly had no idea that my voice was that unique. 